If, if I was to use steroids, I'd be a very mild user. And I have once, would have, if I had have ever tried it, I would have tried it once to use a lot and and didn't really notice a great deal of difference. Do you know what I mean? But um, a lot of women take would take four to five times of the amount that I take. Would take? Yeah, would, would take. Bodybuilders have the reputation to be stupid. And while I'm not a bodybuilder myself, I've nonetheless built a decent physique and had the pleasure to work, get thought and coach a couple. As it comes with every scientific question, we have to ask ourselves first, is it correlation or causation. If a bodybuilder is stupid, did he get stupid by weightlifting or was he stupid in the first place? The answer is actually not that simple and can be traced back to our social hierarchy, how we organize ourselves in a functioning society and envy. Here are my strong points about intelligence and bodybuilding. Number one, the mere action of weightlifting or the buildup in muscle tissue won't impair our brain functions. Leonardo da Vinci, the man that has drawn the Mona Lisa, was known to be very attractive and had incredible strength. He could bend the horseshoe with his bare hands. Yet if you imagine the polymath Leonardo, a genius on so many levels, we would imagine a complete skinny nerd. There's no biological factor that I could think of that reduces our brain power through added protein in our bodies. This alone could end the argument right here, but it's not that easy. Here's a more likely example. You're not wearing much in the downstairs department. You mean I have a small penis? Right no, 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 no. Number two, people with lower IQ are more drawn to bodybuilding. This statement is more believable, but nonetheless, it doesn't explain the whole topic. My assumption is that people with a low IQ generally don't excel in their job. And as humans, we need to be competitive in some way. We therefore search avenues to climb the social hierarchy. One of those avenues is due to weightlifting, to have an impressive physique. We search competition because that's how we survived until now. It's ingrained within us. In a world where crucial resources such as reproductive organisms of the same species, a fancy word for women, money and territory are scarce, a group determines which individual gets the biggest pick on said resources as seen before. It's permanent, right? We've evolved for the hierarchy. And that's where the men are competing. Now you could say they're competing for power, but that's a pretty corrupt way of looking at it. Like they're competing for, let's say, influence. They're competing for leadership. So, and I mean, women use the dominance hierarchy to select mates. Which brings me to the next point. Number three, people want to see you do good, but never better than them, remember that. We are not primed to applaud for the success of our peers, as the success in any shape or form of another always and definitely lowers our own value in the group. If a friend of ours gets successful, it not only makes us question our decision, it also unconsciously of most diminishes our value in the ecosystem. This might sound hard because we don't talk about participation awards here. If someone gets the first place, the only place left for you is the second. This is not something that we all want to hear, but in matter of fact, that's the truth. Is this the way it necessarily has to be? No. We can train our mind to applaud and cheer for the success of our friends. Other people seek a darker route and try to put people down. These are called haters and are often the cause of the stupid accusations. That's why life is like a video game. If you encounter enemies, you're on the right track. While you can choose to be as nice as you possibly can while continuing to work on yourself, we shouldn't count on our peers to do the same. Embrace the hate, but keep constantly working on your physical, intellectual and quality gains.